Um, CERTs is a really fun topic. I really quite enjoy it. I hope you'll enjoy it by the end too. However, if there's one thing I've learned from uh, teaching senior students and seeing their understanding of this, having come from having developed that understanding in year nine and year ten, here's the thing which I've become um, I've become really frustrated at seeing, but I realise why it happens. Okay, many students in year eleven and twelve they get quite good at working with these things, at doing the skills that I'm going to teach you over the next week and a half. Sort of. When I say sort of, I mean they get really fast at it. They sort of can do it almost without thinking. It becomes like an automatic, fluent thing. However, they often do it without really getting what's going on underneath. So therefore they make errors of conceptual understanding. That's what we say. They can do the process, but if I ask them why, they're like, well, I don't know, because I did exercises on this in year 10 and, and I got the right answers repeatedly. So that's it, isn't it? Um, there are lots of students who know the, they know the rules, but they don't know why any of the rules are what they are, okay? Now this is what you need to have your pens out of your hands for to hear. If all you end up doing out of this topic is knowing the rules really well and being very fast and accurate at doing them, if that's all you're doing, then you're just being a machine. You're not being a mathematician. Like that's what we have these things for. Right? These things don't need to understand, they just need to give us accurate answers and give it to us fast. Okay? But I have no intention to make you a calculator, because calculators are better at calculating than you are. You know calculators used to be people? Like that was a, a profession, it was a job, it's like, hey, what do you do? I'm a calculator. Because we didn't have these things, so if we wanted to do things accurately, like work out how fast and at what angle do you need to go so you hit the moon in three days, you need some really accurate numbers, right? So we hired people. They were calculators. And then these got invented. They were really small, and now you can buy them really cheap. Okay? Since we have those, I don't want to turn you guys into those. I need you to be a step above that. I need you to understand what is going on. Okay? So I'm going to ask you to think really hard in this lesson and over the next week and a half as we try and understand this. Pens in hand. The first thing we're going to look at is... I thirds mostly come from, well they all come from roots and cube roots and etc. But most of them are square roots. Square roots come up lots, like in Pythagoras, right? So we need to understand how square roots and squaring relate to each other. Let's start off with a simple example. Um, E.g. If I took a number like say, root 5. This is a third. Uh, it's somewhere between root 4 and root 9, so it's like 2 point something. I have no idea what something it is. But that's the point, it's asserted, it will just have some weird decimal stuff. Now, root 5 is some number. If you square it, because root 5 is the number that you square to get 5, well, if I square that, I should get 5. five. Right? So, <coughs> squaring and taking the square root are kind of like undoing each other. Right? Uh, we actually have a special name for this, and I want you to write these down. Uh, squaring and taking the square root, put this in inverted commas, I'll explain why later on. They're called inverses. You actually know lots of inverses already. Addition and subtraction are inverses, right? You add three to something, you take away three, you land back on your original number. What other inverses do you know about? Not just adding and subtracting, there is... Multiplying and dividing. They're, they're opposites of each other. They reverse what's happening, so we call them inverses. So I can generalize this. This is an example, but over here on the right hand side, if you have it like a different color or something like that, I can say, generally speaking, that if you have the square root of any number, x, and then you square that thing, right? Then that should land you back on x. Does that make sense? All right. Do you have to put the brackets when you have to square? Yeah. I'm putting the brackets, I mean, I would say like 90% of the brackets I ever place in my working or on the board are just to make things clear. It's not because they have to be there, but because I want to be unambiguous in what I'm communicating to you guys. Um, basically what I'm trying to avoid is the confusion between this and this, because they're different, okay? So are you squaring the whole thing or are you squaring the thing inside and I don't want you to mix up the two. So this is squaring the whole thing. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay, so this is the first thing I want to know. <coughs> Put your pens down again for a second. Remember, I talked about that adding and subtracting, right? If you've got a number, 
like say, actually we'll go with x because I just wrote it. You add 5 and then you take away 5 because I said these are inverses, right? What will the answer be? X. It will just be x. Now, does it matter whether I, I, this time I added and then I subtracted? Does it matter what order I do it in? Yes. yes. No. 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 So I'm going to start with the same number again. Instead of adding and then subtracting, I'm going to subtract and then I'm going to add. And sure enough, you still get x. Okay. Um, you'll notice the same thing with multiplication and division. If you multiply by 5, then divide by 5. Doesn't matter if you switch that around, you'll still end up where you started. Agree? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So keep that in your mind. Let's think again of another example. So underneath here, example 2. Instead of taking the square root of 5 and then squaring, what if, this is the example I was talking about before, what if I square first and then take the square root? Okay, now let's not do this in our heads. We can do this our ourselves like manually. I can work out that thing on the inside first, which is 25. And the number that you square to get 25 is of course, cool. So it seems like I've gotten back where I started, right? No. Like as in, I started with 5, yeah. yes, I squared yeah. it, then I took the square root, yeah, which is okay. the reverse order, yeah? yeah. So it, it looks great at the moment, right? Everything looks fine. And many people stop there, and then, don't write this, they write this on the right-hand side as their rule, right? They write, uh, the square root of a square number is the number you started with, okay? That's what a lot of people say. That's what a lot of year 11 and 12 students believe. But it's not true. Let me convince you. I'm going to give you a different number this time. Uh, this time I'm going to give you negative 5, and that gets squared, and then you take the square root. Okay. Now again, think this through with me a step at a time. As with all brackets and operations, you start from the inside, the deepest part, and then you work outwards. Yeah. So negative 5 all squared is negative 5 times negative 5. Agreed? Let's write that, just for the sake of it. I don't want to miss any steps here. Negative 5 times negative 5. Yes? Yes. Now, there's two negatives under there. What happens when you multiply? Well, they are going to become a positive. So they become a positive. The 5s then become 25. Don't they? Yeah. Yeah. But is that a trick question? Because you start with negative 5 and you end up with a positive. OK, so let's just finish, right? Uh, the square root of 25. I already worked out what that was. You, you told me what it was. It's five. Okay. What the dickens is going on? Okay. Because apparently, this is not true, right? Look, look at this third example. I started with negative five. I did something and then I undid it, and I didn't get back to negative five, did I? Right. In fact, I, I, I got somewhere else. Okay. What's happening and why? I mean. Okay, the short answer is no. And that's why this answer here is five. I will come to that, I promise I'll come to that, but, but not yet, okay? Just look at my working. I've, um, I started with the question, and then I did one, two, three lines of working. Are there any problems with any of the lines? Look carefully at them. Does it look okay? You need to convince yourself, not because I tell you or because a book tells you. Does it look convincing to you? Just because I could hear noise. Okay. So now that I've let you sit and think for a moment, let me tell you there is nothing wrong with what you've written down. Okay? Now, which I said from the beginning, but I made you doubt it, didn't I? Okay? Now, here's the issue. Here's why this is not always true. The very first thing we did was squaring. Do you remember that? We had to deal with the square first before you could touch the square root. Okay? But when you square a number, right? if you square a negative number, then what you get on the next line, kind of, it doesn't remember whether you started with a negative or not. Did you notice by the time I got to this line, it looked exactly like this. Okay? So had I, um, had I like, accidentally poured water over my um, piece of paper, 
and then you couldn't read this part. It was gone, right? And this is the final lines of my working, okay? You don't really know what came before. Do, do you notice that? Because squaring, it kind of removes that information out, right? It's like, were you plus or minus before? Well, I don't know. It's, it's gone now, and you can't tell. There's no way to tell. Squaring is kind of like a trap door. Once you fall through, you can't get back and find out what was going on earlier. That information about plus or minus is gone forever. Okay? So just bring it back. As a result, as a result, you can write this sometimes though. That's what example two is about, yeah? Like it works sometimes. What was the difference between two and three? Yeah. It was the negative sign, right? So this is true, now you can write it. Let me tell you when it's true. When x is not negative. It's being negative that mucks up with this, right? So in other words, if x is greater than zero, does it work for x equals zero? Is it true if x equals zero? Yeah. Zero squared is zero. The square root of that is still zero. So it does work, so I can say greater than or equal to. Okay, it does include zero. But if x is negative, you're in trouble. Something else happens, and you have to be careful with that. And a lot of people just ignore that. They just, they just sort of write that, okay? But please, this is really, really important. Put a big highlighting colored box around it, because it matters. <laughs>